Hi, Jenny. Hi, Lori. We're here to talk about the Cancer Moon now. And right. yeah, let's think about the Cancer Moon. First of all, the moon itself represents many things. It represents our deepest ego struggle. And on the other hand, it represents our core need that we, we really, it is very important that we feed the energy of our moon. It, um, without doing so, we live a pretty sad life. So it's very important that we understand and know what sign our moon is in. Um, what else do you want to say about just the natal moon? Um, I, that it ties in with our connection to feminine. Um, there's an element that links it to creativity. Um, there's a, it's just that whole feminine yin aspect of things. Yeah, and it's such a deep, deep part of us. Mm. You know, I, I think of the sun, the sign that the sun is in is kind of the energy that serves all of us. And yet the moon is really what we need to follow. It's more, it's more personal to us. Yeah. And I do really like that whole idea of like, this is where we do the work. This is where we have the ego struggle and we do the work. And it's not something where you just do it and you check the box and you're done. It's, it's a constant process as you encounter the different parts of your life. Right. Right. So, yeah. you know, I, I think of it sort of like, we need to really look at the shadow side, the, you know, the ego struggle of it in order to understand that we kind of have to grapple with that part of it in order to grow from that to the more awakened, um, enlightened side of that moon. So with the Cancer moon, you know, it's funny, those of you who know something about rulership um, know that Cancer that the ruling planet of cancer is the moon. So people often think, oh, if my moon is in cancer, that's the best place for the moon to be. And I think that's, a, it, it's interesting because it is the most natural place for the moon to be. However, I also think it's, it's a very challenging one because in cancer, there is such an intense sensitivity in that cancer moon and a tendency toward moodiness. Um, so the, the core ego struggle of a cancer moon, how would you describe that? It's a struggle with security. I mean, it's a struggle with feeling secure, emotionally secure. Um, there's a, I mean, there's a real, if, well, think about that um, cancer is represented by the crab. So the crab has the shell and then it's got the soft, interior you know um that is you know in some parts of the world is a delicacy you know so it there's this idea that it's under attack it needs the shell because there's this real sensitivity so you gotta you can really think about that in terms of how it works that's part of the moodiness is to kind of protect itself and keep others at bay um but i also think people tend to think like cancer is very sweet and soft and mm -hmm. cancer is fierce Cancer yes. is the fierceness, think of the ferocity of the mother bear protecting her cubs. That helps you understand a little bit more the intensity that, that cancer can um, engage in those protective activities. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I think that's really important. And yeah, the defensiveness also mm -hmm. is yeah. it's one of the hard parts of that cancer moon. So um, in order to feed your cancer moon, how yeah. are you going to do that? Well, you've got to have, I mean, part of it is about boundaries. I mean, there's a real maternal aspect to it. It's this loving sensitivity, um, and that requires healthy, I mean, healthy bonds. So there re that requires some work, some thinking about how to have some separation. Um, and cancer is a water sign, so it's just absorbing everything around it. So one, anybody with a cancer moon has to learn how to, work with that energy in one one way or another and i think our examples will help illustrate that too yeah yeah so on the other side of the work of growing out of the more difficult sides of the cancer moon into the more positive what is the awakened state of of the cancer moon uh, I mean, the awakened state is let's see um yeah it really is that 
awakened sensitivity, nurturing, and, and caring. love. Just yeah, love. Like yeah, you know, yeah, the vulnerability of love. You know, the Cancer Moon. The the hard part of it is the protection, but then the open, open, illuminated side of it is just the the allowing that vulnerability of love. I think in some ways it just represents like how at some level, you know, we want our moms when <laughs> things are tough. Right. You know, we want to be with our mothers and that it's, it's that whole, um, that kind of describes it. Yeah. And people with a cancer moon, you know, generally speaking, have very strong connections to their mothers. You know, depending obviously on aspects to the moon and all that, it can, it can be not uh not great it can be quite difficult but it's there's that that powerful powerful bond with with the cancer moon so who do you have for an example well if i have two people um elizabeth kubler ross okay. i looked at first and perfect um, example yeah so she wrote um did a lot of work on, on death and dying and had um helped start one of the american um holistic medical association um and she just really if you don't know who she is you might recognize this she developed the five stages of grief so that whole um you know anger denial like bargaining uh surrender acceptance like those pieces um the, and i think that was part of her gift to the world to help you kind of mother yourself through really difficult times um there are some other things about her moon that kind of help you understand in which direction it was sort of colored, so to speak. So she has a Uranus contact to the moon. So that means she did groundbreaking work, this unusual work. Um, yeah, so. So before, you know, while we're talking about Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, I just have to mention that I'm in the middle of reading a book right now that is written by one of her, um, a person that she mentored and she wrote some books with him i can't remember his name stan keller or something like that anyway the name of the book is finding meaning the sixth stage of grief hmm. and anyone anyone who's dealing with grief get that book it's really really excellent it just you know like she developed those first five stages and um, before she died he was working on it and she whatever they worked together but this uh, sixth stage of grief of finding meaning in it. I just thought mm. that was really important. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Do, do you want me to go on to my examples or did you have something more? Well, the other one I think is that is Robert Frost, who we both had mentioned and, you know, his, he's one of, I think he, um, well, he was a poet laureate for Vermont yeah. and he definitely, uh, won the Pulitzer prize, I think four times, I think it was a record. Um, so his poems influence generation and it's just interesting because he actually had the same moon placement as Elizabeth Kubler-Ross with it being in the fifth house of the giving of the creative or giving of love, creative, um, projects in the world. And he, but he had, a, he had different contexts. He had a very like sort of sadder, a lot of grief and loss in his life that came through his poetry. Um, and he, he had a Neptune contact to the moon. So just to kind of illustrate a little more how that moon was oriented. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, it's, it's funny because I had made my list of um, cancer moons and I had Elizabeth Kubler-Ross and Robert Frost on there as well. And interestingly, Dr. Benjamin Spock, who did so much work in um, helping people learn how to mother, which is really interesting. And then there's some, you know, another group of people that I had listed with Cancer Moon, Willie Nelson, Kurt Cobain, Cass Elliott, um, Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, Boy George, and Aretha Franklin. I thought it was interesting that there's a lot of music here. There's a lot of um, bringing the emotion for through music and a lot of these people you know the whole idea with that cancer moon this the hard part of the cancer moon of really wearing your heart on your sleeve you know you think about some of the suffering kurt cobain cass elliott janice joplin you know those were um hard public 
expressions of that deep cancer moon. So I would say anyone with a cancer moon, first of all, learn to mother yourself. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you know, self-care yeah. is crucial and understanding the level of sensitivity that you live with and understanding that the defensiveness needs to be replaced with openness and self-love and um, yeah, just understanding that, that level of sensitivity. Mm -hmm. And I think interchangeable with mothering the self is also counseling. You get counseling first and then you're available for counseling others. Right. You've got to do the work first. Yeah, when I said um, in the video about the Taurus moon, you want your, your massage therapist to have a Taurus moon, you want your therapist, if you're going through a time of real loss and grief, you want your therapist to have a cancer moon. <laughs> so, yeah. I think that's about all we need to say about the cancer moon today. Yes. All right, well, thank you, Jenny. Thanks, Lori. We'll Thanks for in, people. Okay. We'll, we'll talk soon about the Leo moon. Thank you. Bye. Bye.